Shabbat Shalom to all the Hebrew Israelite sisters. And um, I also want to thank the Most High for giving me the opportunity to make this video. And before I came into the truth, which my husband, Tazadot, brought me into the truth, um, I never thought I would be making YouTube videos about um, teaching sisters about the Bible and having the knowledge and understanding of the Bible um, and reading the scriptures and understanding what the words mean in the scripture. So I want to thank my husband for that. Um, and I'm going to open this video up with Matthew 6 and 33, which says, But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you seek the kingdom, meaning gaining knowledge of the Bible and the law, statutes, and commandments that we are to follow, then you will have everlasting life. And again, I'm by no means trying to offend anyone by making this video. It's just something that I felt like that I needed to um, talk about. Um, Be sure to emphasize that the video is for women, so yeah. they won't say you're trying to teach men. And this video is strictly for Hebrew Israelite sisters only. And I'm not trying to teach men. That's not what I'm trying to do. This is just for sisters only. Um, the video is titled Modesty. So again, make sure you have a dictionary nearby so you can look up the words along with me. And make sure you have your Bible also. So, modesty. The definition of modesty means freedom from conceit or vanity. The second definition is propriety in dress, speech, or conduct. Now sisters, you see the word dress, speech, and conduct. And when you think of the word dress, you think, okay, my clothing. And speech is how you talk, how you carry yourself when you're speaking, and your conduct. So the conduct is how you're acting at home and in public. Um, so you, can, you can't please the most high or your husband if you're being loud, rude, and have a disrespectful mouth. And cursing and carrying on like that. And that definition, it also um, states conceit, which means a result of mental activity and thought. So that means not thinking about what you're going to wear as far as um, your dress or dressing like a harlot with the tight clothes and the tight jeans and tight skirts and shirts that show your cleavage and things like that. Um, if it's modest apparel, make sure that you have your fringes and your border of blue according to Numbers 15 and 38, which says, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So that is how we are to dress, with fringes and a border of blue. And um, also, the word vanity, which means inflated pride in oneself or one's appearance, so if you're more worried about how you look when you go outside or what you have on, then you're not really in the right spirit because you're just worrying about what people are going to say when they look at you. If you have your modest apparel on. Okay, so we, as Hebrew Israelite sisters, we don't want to have, to be prideful in ourselves in how we dress. So I don't want you to um, think that you're not worthy of self-respect. I just want to bring our daughters back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Now another scripture that I wanted to go over with you is 2 Timothy 2, 9 and 10, which says, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold 
or pearls or costly array. And verse 10 says, But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Now let us look at the scripture and break it down. Now if the Most High didn't want us to dress this way, he would have not given us the scripture. Again, as I stated in the previous video, that you need a dictionary so we can get the meaning and understanding of these words. So in the first part of the scripture, it says, in like manner also. Now the word manner has many definitions, so let's take a look and see. Manner. The first definition says, a way in which a thing is done or happens. The second definition says, a person's outward bearing or way of behaving towards others. And the third definition says polite or well-bred social behavior or habits. Okay, so we saw the word, a way in which a thing is done or happens. So that means that it's a certain way that you are doing things as far as your apparel goes. Now, when you go to the store and you are looking at dresses to wear, if you're in the right spirit, you're going to pick the dress that's not tight. If you wear a size 4, buy a size 6. Why, why does the dress have to be tight? So tight that you can hardly breathe when you're in it. And when you do have it on, you're showing your whole body. Like the image of your body should be for your husband and your husband only. Not showing it off to everybody out in the street. That's why men look at you because of the things that you have on. And it also says a person's outward bearing or way of behaving towards others. So if you want to reflect your outward bearing, then that should be your, you should perceive that to be, well, if I think that I'm going to dress this way, then that's how you should dress. You should dress modest and not like a harlot. And polite or well-bred social behavior or habits. So you have to make it a habit of dressing modest. Not, well, I'm going to do it today and then tomorrow I'm going to dress like a harlot. No, you have to do it every day. It can't be sometime modest. So now the first definition that I said before talks about a thing is done or happens. So that just basically means you dress a certain way. And then again, the outward bearing or way of behaving towards others it's just saying how you dress on the outside okay and another scripture here at Proverbs 23 and 7 says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he heart means your mind when you're talking in the Bible so if you're thinking in your mind that you are you have self-worth, then you're going to dress that way. It, it's like, um, you don't want to dress like a harlot. Then if you're thinking that that's what you are, then that's how you're going to dress. Because that's what you're thinking in your mind. I, you're thinking, I want to attract attention. I want to have my clothes so tight that I can't breathe. And sometimes the clothes are so short, you have to keep pulling them down. And I know you looked at yourself before you walked out of the house to see how you looked. So you know the dress was too short. So as, a, as daughters of the Most High, we should think that we are worthy of self-respect. And that we don't want to, you know, be part of the norm or be part of the in crowd and things like that. Dress like everybody else dress. That's why the, you're set apart from other people. Now, the next part of the scripture says that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So, let's look up the word adorn. And adorn means to make more beautiful or attractive. 
So when you look at the definition of the word adorn, we see that it's a verb and it shows action. So showing action means adorning yourself with the proper clothing, the modest apparel, the dresses and the skirts and the garments, not jeans, which men wear those. It doesn't say tight shirts, tight skirts, short dresses, short skirts. No, it says modest apparel. So when you dress modest, you are being adorned. It does make you look more beautiful and attractive to be in modest apparel. Okay? So that when you look in the mirror, when you're dressed in modest apparel, you feel like you have self-respect. And you know that you're being a role model for other sisters. And it's like, wow, I like how she dressed. She dressed really modest. So you don't want to say, oh, look at her. She got on a tight jeans and tight shirts, you know, stuff like that. You don't want to have that type of reputation. All right. And for the sisters that don't have a righteous husband yet, it's not good for you to leave if you're looking for a husband to find a righteous brother. Because not all brothers are righteous. You have to try the spirit. Thinking that you modest on your picture, but then when he marries you, you go back to dressing like a harlot. So that's being deceitful. At first John 2 and 4, it says that he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So, if you say that you're a modest sister, and you know the scriptures, then that's how you should dress, in, in modest apparel. And at Luke 8 and 17, it says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So if you're pretending to be someone on Facebook or whatever other social media that you're on and then your pictures reflect a different person, then you're not in the right spirit. Alright, and also, sisters, you know if you go out of your home dressed with tight jeans on, a tight skirt, tight shirts, then you are trying to attract attention because you know the the clothes are tight before you left home. If you wear a size 6, you'll go out and buy a size 4 clothes, which is not proper at all. So when you're wearing these tight jeans and tight shorts and things like that, you're subjecting your body to yeast infections because you're not letting your body breathe. And you can go to this link at web webmd.com Web and it talks about information about yeast infections and um, one of the ways to prevent yeast infections was, that stood out to me was number two avoid wearing tight fitting pants and shorts so you stay cool, dry and airy meaning air has to circulate down there so if you have on tight jeans that means that you're not airing yourself out And according to the Center for Disease Control, yeast infections is perhaps the most common type of vaginal infections. Nearly 75% of all adult women have had at least one yeast infection in their lifetime. About 50% of women have two or more, and about 5% of women have four or more in a single year. So that's a lot. So take some time out and research about pants and when they came into existence and for what purpose. Okay, and the Bible also states in Deuteronomy 22 and 5, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. That means pants. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy power. So sisters, are you willing to die over pants? And like my husband says, that is the question. 
So you have to answer that question. Are you willing to die and lose your everlasting life over a pair of pants? So you, you know that you are more than your body. And do you think that a righteous brother in the truth wants to find a wife that's dressed like a harlot? And if you're not in the truth yet, and you find a righteous brother in the truth, but try his spirit, because every righteous brother is not righteous. At 1 John 4 and 1, says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of the Most High. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So you have to try a spirit. Okay. And you must be willing to submit to change your appearance. Meaning you can no longer dress like a harlot. And if you have a problem with submission, you need to study the Bible and get into the right spirit. So that way you will know how to dress. And at Ephesians 5 and 22 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So when you submit yourself to your own husband, as far as wearing the proper dress, dress and modest, then you're showing the Most High that you are submitting to him also because he's the one that gave that scripture and that law. So when you gain knowledge of yourself and realize that you have more to offer than your body but your mind. And that 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh is in you except ye be reprobate. So you have to know that Yahweh is in you, so you have to think like he thinks. So let us take another look at the, the next part in the scripture about modesty. The next word was shamefacedness, which the definition of that means showing modesty, bashful, showing shame. So that means you're not smiling all up in men's faces, talking to men, you know, doing all those kind of things. So examine yourself to see why you want to dress like a harlot. You have to love yourself and have more self-respect for yourself. So the next um, word in the scripture was sobriety, which means the quality of or state of being sober. And sober has many definitions. Let's take a look at those. The first definition says sparing in the use of food and drink. So that means that you can't overindulge in food and drink. That's where a lot of the overweight problems and things like that come from, indulging in too much food and drink. The second one says, marked by sedate or gravely or earnestly thoughtful character or demeanor. Meaning, being thoughtful of how you carry yourself. And it's basically saying the way you act and carry yourself. And the last part of the scripture states, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. And again, basically saying, cover your hair. And not wearing a lot of jewelry, for example. Rings on every finger. But you got the real big hoop earrings on. Things like that. Real flashy stuff. And not wearing clothes that attract attention. So when you're examining yourself, these are some of the questions that should come into your mind. Do I love the most high? That should be the first question that you ask yourself. And do I have self-respect for myself? And do I love myself? And do I want to gain everlasting life? 
Those are the questions that you should be asking yourself. And if you have a daughter, do you realize that she's going to emulate the things that you do? If she see you dressing like a harlot, then that's going to make her want to dress like one also. You know, you have the responsibility to teach your children how to dress. A two and three year old, they don't have, they don't have the understanding and knowledge of the Bible yet. So they're going to wear what you put on them. So if you dress them like harlots, then it's a lot of perverted men out there. They can be staring and looking at your, your daughter with um, stretch pants and leggings on, with a tight shirt. Little girls should have dresses on. So you, so a lot of things to think about when it comes to modesty. Okay, so um, you have to be an example for her. And another thing I wanted to touch on is you know, stop putting hair weave on your daughter's hair. Like, two, three, and four, and five, six-year-old little girls shouldn't have to wear hair weave. They have beautiful hair. Whether it's how some people say kinky, curly, whatever it is, it's beautiful. So, don't put fake. I don't know what they put on it now, but don't, don't do that. Teach your daughter to love herself and her hair. So if you want to gain everlasting life, then you should study the Bible and understand the words that you're reading as far as how a woman should carry themselves. And if you yourself are wearing hair weave, try to transition out of that and go natural. Not with the blonde hair, the hair dye and all of that. Just be your natural self, your natural color of your hair that the Most High gave you. That's what you should do. Now, I know it's not going to happen overnight, but if you want to be in the right spirit, then it'll make you change. It'll make you want to change. So when you look in the mirror, you will love who you see and not trying to be someone else. And then a lot of you sisters, you put the hair weave in your daughter's hair because you don't want to take the time out to bond with your daughter and try to do her hair naturally and tell her how beautiful her hair is and for her to love herself and the skin that she's in so that way she don't wanna wanna have to wear hair weave when she gets older. So you have to love yourself and your hair and just love how the most high made you. And if you you can also do some research on hair relaxers because it does seep into your bloodstream and into your pores. So that means if you have something on your head, it's going to get into your brain. So you wonder why you might be having a lot of headaches and things like that. It could be a result from hair relaxers. So you can always go on the internet do some research on relaxers. So you have to realize and understand that your natural hair is beautiful. Whether it's short, long, it doesn't matter. It still is your hair. So we have to... Some of the sisters have to stop trying to be like the Edomite women with the blonde hair. <coughs> you have to love yourself. You weren't born with blonde hair. In um, verse 10 of the scripture, in 1 Timothy 2 and 10, says, But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. And when you look up the defini definition of godliness, it means divine proceeding directly from Yahweh. So in the good works, meaning learning the Bible and teaching your children and other Hebrew sisters that you may know. So it's, it's coming directly from the Bible and from the Most High. Also, godliness is mean being a good wife and a help meet for your husband. 
in Proverbs 1 and 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So when you come into the knowledge of the Bible, then you would know that this is the right thing for you to do as far as dressing modest. So once you come into the truth and the knowledge of the Bible, that means that you fear the Most High. So do you want everlasting life or do you want to die? And Proverbs says, 3 and 1, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. So that means that we are not supposed to forget the law, which is dress and modest, but let thy heart keep my commandments, meaning that you have to keep the commandments. And the heart is talking about your mind. So that means you have to think always of the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. And the second part of that was for length of days of long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of the Most High and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So it's saying, if you follow the law, statutes, and commandments, your length of days and your long life and peace shall be added to you. When it says, bind them about thy neck, your neck is exposed so things can be seen here. So that means that you have to have them in your mind at all times and write them upon the table of thy heart, meaning your mind, so that you can find favor and good understanding in the sight of the Most High. Okay, so you can also teach your daughters how to profess godliness. If your child, if your daughter is talking at one and two years old, then you should start teaching them the scriptures in the Bible about being modest and how sh sisters should carry themselves. And if you start to cover her hair when she's a small child, then she'll want to continue to do it as she get older. Because nowadays, when you try to teach, um, if you're out in the world and not in the truth yet, you have daughters that are very rebellious. So some of them are not going to want to cover their hair. But if you show them and teach them the Bible and show them that this is the way you are supposed to be and how you should conduct yourself, then they'll be more susceptible to follow the Bible. And you also have to learn how to do for yourself and make your own clothes. You can go to the fabric store and they always offer sewing classes. So maybe one day you and your daughter can go out to the fabric store, pick out a fabric, a dress pattern, a modest dress pattern, not the tight ones, but a modest one. And maybe you and her can bond and build a relationship and try to make a dress together. So that's another thing you can do. And this is for the sisters. That be online, dress like harlots on Facebook. Most of the time, the sisters, not all of them, but a majority of them, you get on social media lusting for men. The pictures that you have posted, your Facebook, um, I don't know what they call it because I don't have one, but 
Facebook, I mean, profile picture. It might be you there with your hair covered and just showing part of the body with the, maybe a shirt on that's not showing anything. But then if they go to the page and see your, like, I guess, whatever pictures you post on there, you dress like a harlot. Tight clothes, tight shirts, skirt with your cleavage out. Some of them probably have bikini pictures and everything else up there. Um, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should have more respect for your body than that. Um, and for the sisters that have a husband, you shouldn't be on social media anyways. You should be spending your time reading, studying the Bible, cleaning the house, cooking, something like that. Not on social media gossiping about this and that. Um, so most of the time, that's all they're up there doing anyways is gossiping. So, and you think that a righteous brother is going to want a sister like you, dressed like a harlot, and not in modest apparel, or living that way. Because you can have on modest apparel, but then you can be total opposite inside, in closed doors, or even out in the street. Because Facebook is just a computer, so people can't really see how you are on the computer versus out in the public where you live. So no no righteous brother is going to want to um, marry a sister like that. And it's, it's how you look on the outside that portrays how you think about yourself on the inside. So if you dress like a harlot, then I guess that's what you think you, you are. You a harlot. And again, the older sisters... Why are you dressed like teenagers? That's what I'm trying to figure out. With the little clothes on and all those kind of things. Yeah. So, it's either you dress modest according to the Bible. If you don't, if you don't change, you're not willing to change, then guess what? Guess you're just going to die. It's just simple like that. So at Colossians 3 and 23, it says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So if you want to change, it'll be in your heart to change. If you say you're going to change, then work on that goal to change how you dress. And also, some sisters have a problem covering their hair. You want to cover your hair halfway. Well, if you don't cover your whole head, you might as well shave your hair off and be bald. It's just that simple. It's like you just got to have some kind of hair showing. So at 1 Corinthians 11 and 5, it says, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. So if you don't want to cover your hair, then just cut all your hair off and be bald. Then you won't have to wear a hair cover. Okay, and also... Whenever we are in need of things, we always say, I want the Most High to please help me. Please, please help me. Help me with this. Help me with that. But the scriptures say at Luke 6 and 46, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? So you can't expect your prayers to be heard if you're not following the law, statutes, and commandments. So, again, I want to say that I hope you take this message to heart. And I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm just trying to be 
I'm just trying to help you get into the right spirit so that you can change and gain everlasting life. So, this is what I like for the Hebrew sisters to do. Go through your clothes. See what's modest and what's not modest and replace it with modest apparel. That's what you need to do. And make sure you have your fringes and your border of blue on your garments. Because that's what distinguished you from the other nation. And if you need head coverings, I can make it special just for you. My scarves are made to each individual. Um, I can make it any color you like. You can specify what kind of flower you want on it. And I also sew on fringes to your garments. So if you don't know how to sew, if you need fringes put on your garments, I can do that also. And I also make garments. So if you would like for me to make a garment for you, um, I can do that as well. So I want to give you the um, website address and the email address. If you go to the lostsheepisrael.org and check out the store, there are things there that you can order, garments and things like that. And um, if there's something specific that you need, just leave a comment or send an email to lostsheepisrael at gmail.com. And that's L-O-S-T-S-H-E-E-P-I-Z-A-E-L at gmail.com and again I want to thank you for watching this video um, you can share the video with someone that you may know that needs to hear this message and um, also if you like the video like the video and again I want to thank you for your time and watching this video and I would like to say Shalom